Welcome everybody. Um, yeah, today I will talk about uh, data analysis and visualization with Python. Um, I work at the German Aerospace Center in the Institute of Simulation and Software Technology. Uh, before that, I did my PhD uh, in theoretical physics at the University of Bonn. And during that time, uh, uh, I heard a lot of talks about Python and uh, scientific um, computing with Python, but I never really got the chance in my work to do it. So I decided to uh, do a little private project on my own um, to learn this stuff because I think it's really beautiful and easy to use. Um, yeah, and this is what I'm going to tell you about here today. So first of all, uh, I will give a short introduction to NumPy, which is the basic building block of uh, all scientific Python libraries I know. Um, and afterwards, I will show you how to do publication quality plotting with matplotlib. And then I will proceed to Pandas. Pandas is um, a library for data analysis, which was written by Wes McKinney um, in order to um, analyze uh, financial data, but you can also uh, do other stuff with it. And in the end, I will uh, show a Pandas use case um, which was the goal of my project, uh, to analyze my personal expenses. So to find out how much money I spent on food, on clothes, or something like this. Okay, um, so the main, uh, everything I will tell you here I got from this book. It's from uh, the author of Pandas, Wes McKinney. It's a really great book, so I can only recommend it if you're interested. And the next thing I recommend to you, if you haven't already heard about it, is the IPython notebook. Um, I will just briefly show you what it is. So, um, as you see, my um, talk is um, web-based, so this is a browser here, and I, I actually did this talk, the slides for the talk in IPython. So IPython is just a, a really nice interface uh, to Python where you can do uh, nearly everything. Uh, for example, uh, uh, slides for a talk. Um, yeah, and you can type in Python commands here. You can type import numpy SNP, and then I will show you later what this is. Yeah, and you get out something. Okay, so this just a brief stop here, and then I will proceed. So as I said, uh, I will begin with NumPy. Uh, so NumPy is very good for fast vectorized arithmetic operations um, because under the hood it's written in, uh, in, in C. And um, Pandas, uh, NumPy also provides tools for integrating uh, code which is written in C, C++ or Fortran. And as I already said, it's the basic building block of all the scientific libraries in Python. And uh, as I said, since um, I will show you a lot of code in my talk, um, I import here the NumPy library and uh, SNP. And in all the following slides, uh, whenever you see NP, this is NumPy, of course, because this is really <laughs> All the code you see is a, is a sequence of commands uh, which uh, are given to 
to the Python interpreter. So uh, the main object in NumPy is the array. So the array is a container for homogeneous data. As you can see here, you can uh, create it with NP for NumPy array, and then you give it, uh, in this example, a list of lists, uh, and you give it a data type. Um, so you have homogeneous data, because under the hood it's a C array. This is the reason why it's fast. Um, and you get a NumPy array. So what you can do with a NumPy array, for example, you can do vectorized ar arithmetic operations. So I want to um, multiply all the um, numbers in the array with, the, with 10. And instead of writing a for loop, about the, uh, which runs over the rows and the columns, I just type data times 10. And then I have an array um, uh, with the same size. And every number was multiplied by 10. You can also do more sophisticated operations, as you can see in the, on the last command on this slide, uh, where I applied a sign function to the data and something else. And um, yeah, this is vectorized operations. And they're really fast because, as I said already, um, under the hood, this is uh, written in C. NumPy also provides easy creation and reshaping of arrays. For example, if you want to uh, create an array with two rows or, and uh, three columns uh, with ones, uh, filled with ones, then you can use this command. You can also uh, arrange. Uh, you can um, create just a range from zero to some number easily and you can reshape. As, as I see here, I take this, uh, this list from uh, 0 to 5 and reshape it into a, a two-dimensional object with two um, rows and th uh, three columns. NumPy also provides a, a random number generation, as you can see here. And the good thing about NumPy is uh, easy slicing and indexing. Um, here you have an array from uh, 0 to 9. And uh, like in C, you can access the uh, elements of this array with uh, this command. So I, have, I want to, the, third ele uh, the fourth element, element of this array, and I get it like this. Uh, here you can see slicing. I want, if I want uh, the elements 6, 7, and, uh, and 8, I can do it like this. And you can also do more fancy slicing in the last command. Uh, I, with, the, with the last command, I get every second element of the array. You can also do this for multidimensional arrays. Here I have a, an array with three rows and four columns. And for, um, if I want, for example, to get a subset, the subset here of the array, uh, then I can do it like this. So in um, the first um, command here describes the subset of the rows and the second one of the columns. So I want uh, row one and two and column one, two, and three, and I get it like this. And uh, you can even do more fancy indexing and slicing. Um, for example, if I want uh, the 0, the 10, and the 11, I can do something like this. Um, so I get the index pair, oh, no, not the 0, I want the 1, which is the index 0, 1. And I want the 10, this is the index 2, 2. And I want the 11, which is 2, 3. And I get it. So you can get every subset of the array. OK. Um, yeah, you can do uh, Boolean indexing. For example, if I want all the data in this array, which is greater than 4, I just type data, data greater 4. And 
I get uh, all the numbers which are, gre are greater than 4. And note that the shape of the array has changed because um, yeah, the data I cut out cannot be uh, pressed into uh, th the same uh, size and cannot be converted to a, to a matrix-shaped uh, data object like before. Um, yeah, I can also uh, do more math-like stuff. For example, I want to cut out the 0, the 3, the 9, and the 6. Um, and I can do it like this. So if, uh, if I divide the data by 3, and uh, uh, if I do modulo 3, and if, if it's not 0, then give something back. So you get an array where the 0, the 3, the 6, and the 9 is cut out. I can also write the data like this. As you can see here, uh, I replace the 0, the 3, the 6, and the 9 by the value 100. OK, I will skip this. You can also do linear algebra with NumPy. Um, so now we'll come to matplotlib. Um, as I said, it's, it's a library for publication quality plots. And it's highly configurable, which means that you uh, because it's aimed for publications, for scientific publications, uh, you want to configure every bit of uh, your, your plot, your figure in your publications. Um, this makes it somehow difficult to learn, but there is also, if you come from, uh, I mean, the idea of matplotlib uh, is that you have a MATLAB-like interface, and there is also a MATLAB-like interface uh, provided. So if you know MATLAB, then you can easily switch to uh, matplotlib. Because I don't know MATLAB, I uh, will not show you that here. I will show you the hard way in some way. Um, OK. Uh, OK, and I, in the following, I will import matplotlib as plt or the part from matplotlib that I need, I will import as plt. Um, and the first thing I want to do in my IPython notebook is uh, matplotlib magic. So I, if I type in matplotlib inline, then I, all the plots will show up inside of my notebook. So inside of the browser. Um, yeah. And um, yeah, plots in matplotlib, they all live inside a figure object. So you create it like this, PLT figure, then you get the figure object, and uh, you have to put some plots into the figure with the add subplot command. And uh, you have to give this command um, a grid of subplots. Um, so you have to give the number of rows, the number of columns, and the position in the grid. In this example, uh, I only want one subplot, so I give one uh, row, one column, and position one. And I get back, back an axis object, and this is the object where you plot things into. So if you have more subplots, then you have different axes, and you can specify where you plot your stuff uh, by using it like this. So you um, take the, the access objects and um, execute the subroutine plot. And you can see here, um, again, some NumPy stuff. I, uh, I created an, an array X, which uh, runs uh, from 0 to 3 pi with 1,000 uh, steps. This is this linspace command. Um, and I want to calculate now the sine x squared of this. And again, I can uh, apply the, sine, the numpy sine function on top of this array and get a new array y, uh, which now contains the, uh, the values of the function. And if I then take the axis and uh, execute plot, I get such a thing. 
and you can see this uh, yeah, looks really nice, I think, but uh, there's something missing, which is the labels. And uh, the next cool thing about uh, Matplotlib is that you can uh, put LaTeX uh, rendered labels in it. So forget about all the stuff above. This is the same as in the last slide. So first of all, I will label this plot with uh, this string here. And uh, if I include uh, this dollar signs here, I can uh, put in LaTeX code. So, um, and this will get rendered like this, as you can see here. I can also um, specify the ticks. So I want to, uh, on the x-axis, I want to have 0 pi, 2 pi, and 3 pi. Uh, and I do it like this, so I um, set the x ticks um, by giving a list um, with 0 pi. 2 pi and 3 pi, as you can see here. And I want to label it with the appropriate labels. Uh, and this I do with uh, x ticks labels. Um, so, and here I also use uh, LaTeX commands, as you can see here, inside this list of strings. Um, I can set a title, my plot. And I put a legend somewhere. So I choose this. There's this option best. So the, there's an algorithm which finds the best location for the legend. And uh, the last thing, I label the x, the x axis with uh, a rendered, LaTeX rendered uh, x character. Uh, yeah. And I think you can see this is. Uh, with a few commands, you get a, a nice looking slide for your publication, a, a nice looking plot for your publication. Um, you can do more. Here I have an example for um, three subplots. As you can see here, I, I again get the figure object and create um, three subplots with one column and uh, with one row and three columns. And I plot now three different things in all the three subplots. The first one is a histogram. Uh, here I give the histogram an array. And this array is a random, uh, a normal distribution, 100 um, numbers of the normal distribution. I give it 20 bins. I can also specify the color uh, easily and the transparency, and the result is, is shown here. I can also do a scatter plot, where I uh, give it uh, the numbers from 0 to 29, and the numbers from 0 to 29, and on top, a uh, uh, Gaussian distribution. So I get a spread here. And the scatter plot makes uh, these little dots here. And the last uh, thing here on the right side, is uh, again um, a random distribution and the cumula cumulative sum, which is also provided by NumPy. And I want to plot it uh, in red with a dashed line. And I can do this very conveniently with uh, giving this uh, string here, r and minus minus. And uh, you can also see that the plot command, in this case, only uh, needs an, uh, a y values and the x values are just the numbers from the index of this uh, array. So from 0 to um, 59. Yeah? Are the plots exported as PDFs or are they uh, PGF or something like that? You can export it in different formats. I'm not sure what's possible, but I think you can do PDF, SVG, all the things you need for scientific publications. Well, but you what I'm concerned about is are the numbers, for instance, rendered in the same plot as font as the map that is in my paper, or do I have to configure my, my Python in the same way that I configure my LaTeX and replicate all that configuration code? You mean if you if you would do a publication in LaTeX, or what do you mean? Well, I'm writing a paper in LaTeX, right? Yeah, and yeah. I specify that I want a particular font. Ah, OK, I see. Yeah, I'm, I have. As I said, I have never done this. 
So I'm not sure about that. Yes? Ah, yeah. Uh, that's a good question. I'm not sure about that. Yeah, but that's math, math mode. I, the question aims: uh, can you uh, can you include um, normal LaTeX text? Yeah. Does that work? I'm not sure. Okay. I, I I didn't try it. Yeah, but but not the plot, not the labels in the plot. I mean, if if I the question is, was um, in, for example, um, here, if I want my, this my plot title written in LaTeX, right? In in LaTeX form, if I can render this, but I'm not sure if this is possible. We can try it out later, maybe if if there is time. I can just switch to the to the notebook. Yeah. Okay, so now I will come to Pandas. So as I said, uh, Pandas is a library for data uh, analysis. And the first obvious uh, thing that you will see is that the, there are, the data structures are exactly like uh, NumPy arrays, but there is also an index label and a column label. Um, and you have support integrated for time series, which is uh, especially important for my problem because I have uh, expenses at different dates and I want to analyze it. Uh, Pandas can also handle missing data, uh, which NumPy can't. And uh, it has uh, functions for sophisticated data transformation. In the following, I will import pandas as PD, as shown here. So the main objects in pandas uh, are series and data frames. Uh, if I have one-dimensional data, I use uh, series. As you can see here, I create a pandas series by giving it an, a NumPy array of three um, random numbers and I also provide an index which is a list uh, of strings in this case but I can also uh, use other um, types not only strings but also integers or floats um, and uh, if I plot it you can see uh, this is you can see that there is this index and the data and the data type so that's, that's a series. And uh, the other thing is the data frame for multidimensional data. Um, this, you can imagine this as a, um, a LaTeX uh, an Excel spreadsheet. So you have two-dimensional data, and you have an index, and you have named columns. And you um, create it um, like this, you pandas data frame, you give it a uh, NumPy array, so again, I, I um, create six random numbers, reshape them into uh, two-dimensional objects with two um, rows and three columns. Then I give the column names, um, Alice, Bob, and Charles, and I give the index names, one and two. So this is uh, the data frame object, where all the, um, which is the main, main uh, data object in, in Pandas. And uh, yeah, what can I do with it? Yeah, first of all, I can uh, select uh, columns in this spreadsheet. Uh, for example, by giving um, 
a label inside these brackets. So I want, uh, go back for a moment, I want this column here. And I can do it like this. And you can see that this gives me back a series. So I, if I um, want to know what is the type of this object, you can see that this is a series. It's a pandas series. Yeah. Um, you can get all the subsets in, uh, in this data frame with the ix uh, command. Um, and the good thing about it is that you can not only use indices, but also labels. As you can see here, uh, I will go back for a moment. I want to get uh, this row here, yeah, the row one. And uh, I can give the ix command uh, in the first argument uh, a label, one. And in the second argument, I give it indices. Uh, if you know Python, this, um, this symbol indicates that you get the, uh, all, all the indices in the, in the array. And indeed, this gives me back this row, but now labels uh, um, transfers the column uh, names to index names. So now I have Alice, Bob, and Charles as index uh, labels here. Um, and the name of the, and there is also a, a name attribute in the series, which is then, of course, the uh, former index label one. I can also do, um, As I said, I can also do uh, index-based slicing. So here I get the uh, zeroth row and the zeroth and second element in the column. So I get a series of two elements. Um, what I can also do in pandas is function application. So I want to apply a, a some function on every element in the data frame, uh, and I can do this with the apply function. So I define a, a function which adds uh, 100 to all elements, and I just apply it onto the data frame, and I get a data frame with all the numbers um, increased by 100. There are also included um, functions for statistics like sum or mean, um, and you can see the sum just uh, sums up all the columns and gives you back, so it sums up all the columns and gives you back in, uh, a series with the uh, index Alice, Bob, and Charles, and uh, the data is now the, the sum of each column. Um, yeah. The next thing you can do is merge data of different uh, shapes. And this is a really cool thing about pandas. So here you can see uh, two different data frames uh, with different dimensions, uh, but they share a key. Yeah, here I have data one and keys, A, A, B, A, C. And here I have data two with, uh, also with keys and uh, yeah. If you want to merge them somehow, what would be the natural thing to do? So they share a key. Therefore, um, if I want to merge them, I get something like this. Yeah. Um, I have now three columns, data, data two, data one, and a key, which was shared between uh, these two data frames. Um, uh, so, uh, sorry, I forgot something. Uh, the special thing about this data frame is that there's a one-to-one -one correspondence between the data and the key. Yeah, so pandas uh, will recognize this and um, re will recognize this one-to-one -one correspondence. So it will set, and whenever there's a key A, then data two is free. Uh, and this is what exactly what happens when you merge this. When you merge this, so whenever the key, the key is A, 
then data two is three. Yeah, so it's somehow intelligent merging. And there are, there are a lot of stuff like this. So this is really um, powerful uh, data wrangling me mechanisms included in pandas. You can also concatenate data. Here you can see uh, two data frames uh, of different shape. Here you have four columns and here you have three columns. And if I want to concatenate them, I, I will glue them together uh, like this. And I get something like this. You can see here that despite the fact that they had different, uh, these two uh, source uh, data frames had different dimensions, uh, the concatenation works. But uh, because there was no data in the, in the fourth column of the second data frame, it will include uh, not a number. I still have 25 minutes, right? OK. Good. Um, OK, and here you can see one uh, another cool thing about pandas, which is the handling of missing data. So it will just infer uh, that you want that this is the right thing to do. So I, I want to concatenate two things which are not compatible at the first sight, but you can do it with pandas. And uh, it will just fill in missing values with uh, NAAs, NANs. Um, yeah. If I do something like this, maybe I want to, uh, I have um, now two uh, rows with, with the same data and I want to drop it. You can also do it very easily. You can just uh, use the drop duplicates uh, routine and you give uh, it the, uh, as an argument, you give it the, um, um, the, um, the string of the, of the column, A. So in, in this case, A. So it will uh, search if A is equal in two columns, it will uh, drop one of them. And this is exactly what happens here. Uh, and also you can see that it keeps the one uh, with the number here in the, in the, in the fourth column. OK. Um, for my problem, it was really important that I can analyze time series. And this is also completely included in pandas. Um, here I create, I, I take the data frame from the slide before and rewrite uh, the index. So uh, what you, and the index is now um, from the uh, date time library. So I import date time and create and a new index by giving a list of date times, as you can see here, uh, and passing it to the, um, to the index of the data frame object. I also uh, give a name for the index, dates, and a name for the column class. And you can see that this uh, now appears here, the name for the index and the name for the columns. And uh, indeed, if I look at the uh, zeroth, zeroth entry of the index uh, array, you can see that this is a timestamp uh, of the type date time. Um, yeah. The next thing is when I want to plot this data in contrast to NumPy, uh, pandas provides more convenient plotting routines. So it, uh, on top of matplotlib, um, pandas provides more convenient routines. Um, if you want to plot this data, you have already um, an index uh, of dates. You have a name for this uh, date, for this axis, and a name for this axis. And it would be nice if you can plot it and don't have to give the axis names and the labels this is exactly what pandas does. So if I take this data frame, df3 now, and type plot, then it automatically does all the labeling for me. As you can see here, I had four columns. 
I had even one column with uh, N -A -A -Ns in it, uh, but it works. So um, you have a plot, you have uh, the dates as uh, labels in the, on the x-axis, you have, have the x-axis label, and you also have uh, the label of the um, columns here with just one command plot. And this is really nice about pandas. So you do not have to, if you are lazy, you can just hit plot and everything is there. Okay, um, and now I will come to uh, the use case. So the, why I did all this uh, stuff. So I wanted to analyze my uh, personal expenses. This, uh, and they look like this if you get an uh, um, account statement from your, from your bank, you get uh, a date, the, the amount of money which was transferred, and some description. And I uh, anonymized my, uh, my data here, so this is uh, my data, but somehow anonymized. Um, so, uh, and what I, the first thing you have to do is you have to categorize all this stuff, because I want to know uh, how much money I spent on different uh, stuff, yeah? Um, and this I done, I've done with, uh, I've written a small tool which is called PyAccount, um, with, which does this. So um, it's, it reads in uh, your, your um, account statements from your bank and uh, asks you, uh, it, it prints out the description and asks you which category is it, and you can filter it. And then you can create filter lists, so every time uh, uh, there is Aldi in, in the string here, then it's food, for example. I, I will not show you how this works uh, in, in detail, but the result is, is this. So um, on top of the data from the bank, which, is, which are these three columns, I get the, the uh, uh, fourth column, which is the category. So all the uh, items in this um, data are now categorized. Um, so, and the first thing I want to know is how much money did I spend on some category? And Pandas provides a very useful uh, tool for this, and this is the group by uh, object. So I have this data frame from the slide before, and I hit group by category, and calculate the sum, and I get exactly what I want in one step. So I have now in the, uh, uh, the row index is, is now the category, is it's, it's named correctly, and I get um, the sum of all these categories in, uh, in, the, second, in the first uh, column. Um, and, I can, and again, I can plot this really uh, easily with pandas. So, okay, first I want, uh, what I have to do now, I don't need this description anymore, so I have to uh, get the subset, uh, the series subset, uh, which is the first column, and I do this with the ix command, uh, oh, sorry, <laughs> with the ix command, so I have this data frame, group, group sums from the slide before, I use this ix command and give it uh, a list of uh, categories in the first uh, um, argument. So I only want to categorize car, cash, food, kids, media, restaurant, sports. And um, the second one is value because I only need the, the value column. So this pi data on the left hand side uh, is just a series which uh, now contains the data I want. And I can plot it just with plot, and I want to make a pie chart, so I say kind pie, and I give it a title, and it does everything for me. So I, I have uh, a nice picture with one command, and I can see that I uh, eat a lot, yeah? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, as I said, this is anonymized. <laughs> it's, it's not really my data. Um, and it changes every time I create a 
the, uh, the slides because it's random. <laughs> OK. Um, yeah, you can also, but uh, uh, the data here now shows the expenses on, on food in, uh, on the whole time span. But of course, I want to analyze uh, how much did I pay uh, on, on food in, in January, or did it change over the month, or something like this. And therefore, I can restrict um, um, the data to a specific time span. And this is also a very cool feature about pandas. I can do it like this. I can give it just a string which gets recognized as a, as a date. And I want to, uh, to, to slice out uh, from 1st February to 1st um, April and do the same group by category and sum routine. And now I get the same kind of data. But now you can see the numbers are smaller because um, it's only for, for two months instead of uh, six months. The, the, the data before was for six months. I can also uh, look at the expenses over the time with the group by um, mechanism. So I take the data frame, group by category, and get now only one group, the food group in this example, and I get a data frame uh, which now only contains the category food. And again, I can plot it in a nice way. I, here you can see again this uh, convenient um, plotting style um, argument. I want to have dots and lines, and it's just O minus. And I get um, a nice plot uh, with uh, the right labels. Uh, OK, this plot doesn't uh, say that much, uh, but you can do it for other stuff. Um, and uh, this can be interesting. OK. Um, so as I said, I want to get the monthly uh, expenses of, uh, of food or car or something like this. And therefore, I have to, uh, to um, sum up all the expenses in a, in a given month and uh, aggregate it. And this can be done. In, in this way, so um, I go back here. So I have food in this case. And uh, now I want, for example, this is both December, so I want to sum this up here. And this can be done by this resample routine. So I say resample, this M stands for month. And how sum? You can also do mean or, some, uh, or something else. But I want sum, so I uh, do it like this. And I get a series uh, where now I always have the end of the month in the uh, date um, row. And I have the sum uh, for the monthly expenses on food in the first column. Um, since I don't want to have uh, specific dates here, but I want to have time spans. So I don't want uh, the data uh, corresponds not to this day, 30th of uh, uh, November 2013, but it corresponds to November th uh, 2013. And uh, therefore, I can, uh, in pandas, you can easily convert time stamps to periods. Yeah. And this is just done with this single um, um, command. So you type, uh, you take the data frame and try to, um, make two period, two period, and then you get uh, the same data. But now here you have uh, another data type, which is not a timestamp anymore, but a period, a time period. Um, yeah. And now I have what I want. I have the monthly expenses of food. Um, over uh, six months. I only show four here. OK, um, and I can, again, I can plot it. So I just type plot. And I get uh, a nice plot. And I can see that I, uh, what I did. Yeah. Um, you can do more fancy stuff. For example, calculate the relative change in the monthly uh, food expenses by 
taking uh, the monthly the monthly food expenses and divided by the data shifted uh, one month uh, earlier with this shift minus one and then you uh, subtract one to get a relative change uh, in, in, in just with one command and you can see uh, that it gives you a series and you can plot it and you can do much more with pandas of course um, and the last thing I want I own I don't want this for food I want this for a lot of categories and see what how they changed over the time and uh, so I want um, something like this um, for here you can see that with this commands uh, I get what I want so I uh, loop I create a new data frame me and now I loop over all these categories that I I'm interested in then I use this group by uh, mechanism to get um, the data for the specific group and then I resample it in the same way with month and sum and uh, again here I do this period uh, this um, transformation to periods uh, in, in one step with this kind uh, argument and here I append uh, each column to this whole data frame in the last command and if I show now the data frame I have exactly what I want I have uh, the expenses for car in November, December, January, February, and so on. And again, this can be plotted with uh, a single command in a nice way. In this, uh, this time, I hit, I type plot and kind uh, bar plot horizontal. I want it stacked, so on top of each other, and I give the transparency value. And I don't have to label anything, it's, everything is there, and I now see uh, where my money uh, went. Um, yeah, in a really nice way. Okay, I hope I've shown you that uh, this Pandas is, um, yeah, is, is, is a really nice tool for, for data analysis, and it's really accessible and easy to use. Yeah. Questions? <laughs> yeah. How is the performance for big data? Uh, the question was how the performance is for big data. Yeah. Um, I heard it's it's quite good, but I'm no, no expert in this field because I'm, as I said, I did this as a private project for small data, and uh, but I I heard that this is a topic on a Pi Data Conference or something like this. So I think it's also useful for for big data. Yes. Okay, the, so the performance is, is good. Yeah. <laughs> yes? So why Python one of R? Yeah. I don't know R, so I cannot answer the question. I just know Python and I, and I love Python. Yeah, I cannot answer it. It's, it's just a matter of taste, I think. I mean, the good thing about Python and this IPython notebook is that you can do, uh, it aims to, to, um, to be a tool for the whole scientific workflow so that you can do everything. You can do uh, programming, you can do scientific publications, you can write a paper in it. This is the, the goal of, IP, of the IPython notebook. I think it is one of the goals. And uh, yeah, it looks really good. So. Uh, it's not there yet, but uh, 
to my experience, it's it's just this. Maybe this is a, a reason to use uh, to use Python for data analysis. Yeah. You don't have to do it. I just well, okay. Still yeah. a library, right? And so Python doesn't really understand that all of these operations are vector operations. And so as an interpreter, I'm able to go ahead and do uh, useful operations <laughs> such as uh, combining things or or uh, any of these typical compiler operations like strength reduction, right? And pulling things up and pushing them down uh, in the hierarchy in order to optimize it. And so. Your argument that it's so fast it's like C doesn't seem to make sense to me, right? It's, it's fast like C as long as you're talking about very simple operations, but anything that is more complicated and refactoring would make sense, Python's going to lose. Yeah, but yeah, okay. But then there's, I mean, it does not, pandas and numpy doesn't, do not cover everything, of course, but I think then you can use Sison or something like this. And, uh, yeah, but it's still an extension to Python, right? Whereas if you take R or Julia, these are first class operations in the language, and so the interpreter is able to go ahead and refactor all the code. Yeah, maybe. <laughs> I'm just responding to what you said. So yeah, yeah. Throw that out there. Yeah, okay. Yes? My question is somewhat related to the big data problem. Do you have an option inside what data structure is used to hide the data types? So, like a vector or a deck, or so you can, you have to control about the, the, the memory or how the data is applied to the memory? I am not sure. I, I'm really new to this stuff. I present the uh, array. Yeah. Thank you. 
Okay. I think there are no more questions. Then thank you again. <laughs>